many of my viewers have claimed that their favorite video was my hunting authors and their favorite rifles episode that I did almost three years ago. Thousands of you, literally thousands of you, subscribe to my channel while watching that particular video and it just became an instant fan favorite on my channel. But I often find myself drifting off into deep thought about some of those great authors and their stories. And one thing that always bugs me about them is that most of those great authors aren't really experts on ballistics or gunsmithing or reloading, metallurgy, or even firearm design and function. They basically regurgitate the works of other experts. Many of the great hunting authors, you know, promoted the sales of guns, ammunitions, magazines, books, and themselves for profit for a living. But if you take a hard look at it, they really didn't add anything of tangible value to the tools that we use today as hunters. They had a great story to tell and connected with an audience, and as a result, they became the experts by default. Most of those authors that I featured in that other video were great hunters, great writers, or a combination of both. Many of them even dabbled a bit in ballistics and the gunsmithing field. But like me, they really weren't experts in those fields. Also like me, they relied on the work of real experts for their material and research. <laughs> this video is about those forgotten firearm experts who worked hard behind the scenes to further our hunting passion. Many of them became authors themselves, but their narrow audience kind of kept their great books lingering in obscurity and even their name and reputation, you know, basically forgotten to the modern world. They never got the notoriety that they deserve, in my opinion. These authors had no captivating stories of elephant charges or tales of killing deer at 600 yards with a revolver. <laughs> These expert authors kept their facts and research straight without the embellishments that make a best-selling book. So sit back, grab your favorite adult beverage, and relax as we cover some of my favorite forgotten firearm experts. In addition to inventing fantastic cartridges like the 25-06, Adolf Niedner is considered a pioneer of modern gunsmithing and of precision shooting. But Adolf Niedner was more than just a cartridge inventor. Niedner's rifles are some of the most sought after collector rifles today. Niedner made his own barrels for his builds, which were considered to be the most accurate barrels of his day. He made rifles for historical figures like Townsend Whalen, Ned Roberts, and Charles Newton. Niedner was also a top-tier sharpshooter in his day, and together with the legendary ballistician Dr. F.W. Mann, helped create modern rifle ballistic theory for precision shooting. J.R. Mattern is the father of modern handloading. Famous figures like Elmer Keith, Townsend Whalen, and many firearm experts relied on Mattern's work to figure out how to develop accurate, safe, and reliable ammunition with the limited resources that were available at the time. His book, Handloading Ammunition, was the first of its kind and was a prelude to modern reloading books that followed. When Mattern published this book in 1926, He'd already been handloading for over 40 years, which made him basically the prominent expert in the, in the field at the time. Mattern loaded ammunition in a time before bench-mounted loading presses were invented. <laughs> Ammo was reloaded by hand with a tool like this. And eventually, though Pacific invented the C-press and all that changed, but in Mattern's day, I mean, handloading was literally loading by hand, and Mattern would bring the modern reloading process into the 20th century. T. 
Townsend Whalen was a very prominent figure in the firearms world about three quarters of a century ago. Unfortunately, over the decades, the lore of Whalen has kind of faded into obscurity, which is a shame. Colonel Townsend Whalen was one of the few popular firearm writers who was also an educated firearm expert by trade. Whalen was an expert rifleman, survivalist, outdoor gear inventor, expert hunter, competitive shooting legend, and had 40 years of military service to draw from. But that isn't what separated him from other authors. Whalen was commander of the Frankfurt Arsenal, where the U.S. government experimented with and developed firearms and cartridges back in the day. He was also the director of research and development at the Springfield Armory, where Whalen supervised some of the brightest engineers, gunsmiths, and ballisticians that the firearm industry has ever seen. When he wrote about something firearm related, he was giving direct knowledge and experience that other writers could just never possess. He personally witnessed the evolution of modern powders, cartridges, and metallurgy, much of which occurred under his direct supervision. James Howe was an engineer, machinist, inventor, and master gunsmith, often hailed as one of the smartest and influential men in the firearm industry. His influence would shape military and civilian uh, firearm preferences up until the Second World War. Howe was in charge of the machine shop at the Frankfurt Arsenal when Whalen was the commander there. And as the head gunsmith, Howe quickly gained a reputation for producing the finest firearms that the Arsenal had ever seen. During this period, Howe also invented the popular 35 Whalen cartridge. In 1923, Townsend Whalen introduced how to Seymour Griffin, who was making the finest rifle stocks that Whalen had ever seen at the time. Together, Seymour Griffin and James Howe founded Griffin and Howe, and would go on to successfully produce the finest custom rifles that America had ever seen. Famous figures like Ernest Hemingway, Clark Gable, Bing Crosby, Dwight Eisenhower, and Robert Rourke owned Griffin and Howe rifles. In 1935, James Howe would open the first civilian shooting school in the United States. Also, his rifle scopes became prolific. Howe began inventing mini scope mounts for different rifles. Howe even invented the detachable side mount used on the M1 Garand rifle carried by World War II snipers. But Howe is probably best known and most often quoted for his books, the Modern Gunsmith, which was published in 1934. It was so detailed and complete that it had to be published in two volumes, and for many years this was the basically considered the Bible of gunsmithing. Like Whalen, Major General Julian Hatcher was a military firearm expert, but unlike Whalen, who was mostly responsible for research and development, Hatcher was responsible for identifying and fixing problems with existing firearms. In 1916, he was tasked with solving issues with the M1909 machine gun and subsequently set up the United States' first machine gun school when he determined that the problem was a training issue. As chief of the small arms division of the Army Ordnance Department, he solved grenading receiver issues with 1903 Springfields and fixed early issues with the M1 Garand rifle. In essence, Hatcher was the Army's engineering troubleshooter when a firearm developed problems. His first book, Hatcher's Notebook, is a chronicle of everything the U.S. government went through to develop, fix, and reverse engineer firearms in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and even into the 50s. Hatcher's Notebook is one of the most interesting books I've ever read.
Charles Edward Chappell was a military legend, aeronautical engineer, and gunsmith. But his biggest contribution to firearms is that he was one of the first big collectors of firearms. He wrote the first books on collecting firearms and was the foremost authority on determining the value of collectible firearms. In the past, you had to spend a lot of money to hire a guy like Chep uh, Chapel to appraise a gun for you, but that did very little for your average collector that wondered what the value of his collection was, but couldn't afford an appraiser. Chapel changed all of that with a series of books that provided values for non-professional collectors. After that, your average guy could become a successful gun collector and was less likely to get ripped off by professional collectors. Chapel was also the first author to introduce gunsmithing to the masses in an easy to read and easy to understand format. Most lay people found house books really tough to read and pretty much outdated by Chapel's time, but Chapel's 1962 book, The Complete Guide to Gunsmithing, was a real game changer. Parker Otto Ackley was one of America's greatest gunsmiths ever. Even today, if you have a rifle with P.O. Ackley stamped on it, you have one of the most sought-after collector guns around. But Ackley is best known for his Wildcat cartridges. Other gunsmiths developed plenty of Wildcats, but nobody really created a system for turning almost all bottleneck uh, rifle cartridges into Wildcats until P.O. Ackley did it. Ackley's system involved reforming the shoulder to 40 degrees and straightening out the taper of the case. This made it possible to simply rechamber almost any existing rifle to shoot an Ackley improved round by fire forming a standard round. This allowed more powder capacity, thus more velocity, and it generally improved brass life. Ackley's system allows us to use standard and improved brass in the same rifle, and it gave serious reloaders endless possibilities. Stuart Otteson is a brilliant engineer who made studying the technical attributes of bolt-action rifles his life's work. Otteson covers the strengths, weaknesses, performance, design, and history of every bolt-action rifle with a level of detail that no one had ever seen before. You know, rather than copying the works of others, Otteson reverse engineers every bolt-action design and does his own independent testing on them. He even creates his own blueprints and technical illustrations for the rifles, many of which are more correct than the patent drawings for those rifles. Some of Otteson's findings contradict what the manufacturers originally claim, which gives us a new perspective on these old designs that, you know, we, we thought we knew everything about already. If you're a real life rifle nerd like me, this book will be one of your favorites. Otteson should be enshrined as one of the greatest gun authors of all time, but unfortunately, he's just another forgotten firearm expert. Dr. Harold Vaughn was an engineer, ballistician, and one of America's top research scientists. After retiring from the Sandia National Laboratories, he devoted the rest of his life to the most rigorous scientific research ever conducted on rifle accuracy. He shattered 100-year-old myths and brought us into a modern era of precision shooting. In the past, we looked at ballistics through a century-old perspective centered around military art artillery, but Dr. Vaughn broke that mold and not only found that bullet ballistics are totally different, but some of the calculations we were using and the behavior of bullets was c 
completely different than what we originally thought. Dr. Vaughn wanted to know exactly what happened between the trigger break and the bullet hitting the target. And he leaves no stone unturned in his quest to find out the answers. The state of modern long-range precision shooting wouldn't have been possible without the work of Dr. Vaughn. Um, you know, uh, just about everybody pulls information from Dr. Vaughn, but other than Brian Litz, few people ever give this guy credit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video about some of my favorite forgotten firearm experts. These were pioneers of our passion that made what we do today possible. Unfortunately, most of their deeds went largely unnoticed and more famous gun writers often borrowed their work to sell books and write articles that regurgitate the same information, but often in a more captivating and palatable writing style. And that's why I guess they're famous authors. As much as I love reading a lot of the famous gun writers, I always used to wonder where they got their information from. And in my quest to find out, I stumbled upon pioneers in the industry like the ones I presented in this video. Hopefully, this video inspires some of you to read these old books and bring these forgotten experts back to life. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.